This is part 10 of AngularCRUD tutorial. In our previous video, we discussed how to get this department drop down on our form. And here is the HTML for that drop down list. Notice within the HTML, we have the options hard coded for this select list. So, in this video, what we'll do is remove those hard coded options from the HTML and retrieve them from an array in the component class. So the first thing that we want to do is create a type for our department. Now if you look at the options of the department, notice each option has got a value which is nothing but the ID of the department and the department name itself. So let's create a type and let's do that within the models folder. Right click on the models folder, new file, since this is department model, let's call it department.model.ts. As you might have guessed already, the department class is going to have two properties, ID and name. Next, let's import this department type within our create employee component. So in the create employee component TypeScript file, let's include the required import statement. Now in this class create employee component, let's create department's property and this property is going to be of type department array. Remember we have just imported the department type from this file. We know each department is going to contain two properties, the ID of the department and the name of the department. Let's set the name of the department here to help desk. Let's do the same thing for the rest of the options. One important thing to keep in mind is this department's type information right here. This is not required for the application to work. We'll actually prove that in just a bit. But having the type information right here adds great value during development because it provides IntelliSense, error checking and type safety. At this point, we can remove the hardcoded options from the HTML. So I'm going to remove all these options and then instead we are going to use ng4 structural directive and loop over the department objects that we have within the department's property. So on the option element right here, let's use ng4 structural directive. Since ng4 is a structural directive, it has an asterisk in front of it. Structural directives modify the DOM, that is they add or remove elements from the DOM. Adding and removing elements is different from showing and hiding. We'll discuss the differences in detail in our upcoming videos. Now let's loop over each department that we have in the department's property. So let DEPT, so we're creating this variable DEPT and we are going to iterate over the department's property and we know this department's property contain an array of department objects. As we are looping over that array, this variable is going to point to each department object that we are currently iterating over and we want the value of the option and we want to bind that property to the department ID. Remember this variable right here, DEPD, contains a reference to the object that we are currently iterating over. So we know the department object has got an ID property and we want that ID value as the value for the option. And we also want the department name as the text displayed. So again, we're going to use this variable DEPT and since it's a pointer to the department object, we know it has got name property and we are using interpolation right here to display the name of the department as the option text. So since we are using ng4 structural directive on the option element, each option will be repeated for each department object that we have in the department's array within our component class. Notice we have the same set of options displayed within the select list and when we select an option, the respective option value is captured by the Angular auto-generated form model right here. Now, if we include another department object within our department's array, this object will also be displayed as an option within the department's drop-down list. Notice we have the admin department as well. When we select that, its respective ID value is captured by the Angular generated form model. One important point to keep in mind is that this ng4 structural directive should be used on an element that we want to have repeated. In our case, 
we want an option for each department object that we have in the departments array. So that's the reason we have included the ng for structural directive on the option element. Now let's see what's going to happen if we move that ng for structural directive onto this div element. Now what's going to happen is for each department object that we have in the departments array, we are going to get this entire div element repeated. So since we have five department objects within the departments array, we will have five department drop-down lists. So this entire div will be repeated for each department object. So if we take a look at the browser now, we will have five departments drop-down lists as you can see right here. And within each drop-down, we have a different option. That's not the behavior we want. So let's move that ng4 directive back onto the option element because that's what we want to have repeated for each department object that we have in the department array. Notice now we get one department with five options as expected. Another important point to keep in mind is when we are binding to a property, we will have to use square brackets as you can see right here. We discussed property binding in detail in part 9 of Angular 2 tutorial. So if you're new to property binding, please check out that video. Now let's see what's going to happen if we remove these square brackets. If we remove these square brackets, each option will have a value of this literal text dept.id. Let's actually confirm this. If we take a look at the browser right now, and then irrespective of the option that we select, notice the value that is captured, dept.id, that literal text, instead of the respective department ID value. Notice any option that we select, we have the same value. So that's why it's very important when you are binding to a property, make sure you use square brackets. If you're binding to a string literal, then we don't need the square brackets. Now, if we take a look at the department's array right here, notice we have included its type information. Now, with or without this type information, the application is going to work exactly the same way. So now, if we take a look at the browser, it's going to work the same way as before. When we select any of the options, notice the respective department ID value is captured by the Angular generated form model. So the application is working the same way. But it's great to have this type information because during development, it provides us great features like IntelliSense, error checking, and type safety. On this slide, we have the code that we just discussed. Thank you for listening and have a great day.